there are a lot of very prominent scientists. Richard Wrangham, an anthropologist at, at Harvard, is, is one who have made the case that um, war is hundreds of thousands or even millions of years old. Wrangham is somebody who studies chimpanzees and he has found examples of chimpanzees forming groups and raiding other chimpanzee troops and um, killing one or two members of uh, the other troop. So based on that evidence and also the evidence that you see among some simple pre-state tribal societies uh, who also uh, engage in lethal warfare, from that Wrangham um, makes the case that uh, our ancestors have been fighting forever, basically. The problem is, first of all, that um, there are very few cases of uh, lethal uh, chimpanzee fighting. On average, if a scientist watches a troop for seven years, he may see one case of this sort of fighting. There are some anthropologists who think that these lethal raids are stemming from uh, human encroachment on chimpanzee hab uh, habitat. It might actually be a, a recent cultural uh, behavior among chimpanzees. Another problem with the idea that war is really ancient is that we only have good evidence of fighting among humans going back about 10 or 12,000 years. So yes, the simplest human societies, uh, nomadic hunter-gatherers, do fight. Um, that's clear cut. It had been thought once that war only emerged with more complex societies. Now we know the simplest societies do fight, but they only really started fighting, uh, as I said, about 10 uh, to 12,000 years ago. Uh, there, are, there is evidence of uh, settlements and of uh, fairly complex societies before that with no evidence of warfare. So I think it's really important for people to know this basic fact that war is actually quite a recent uh, behavior. One of the reasons that people tell me we will always fight wars is because it's in our nature it's innate male aggression to fight and so forth. I think that's easily refuted just because uh, war is so recent and there's this enormous variability uh, between cultures. So the second most common reason that people cite for uh, warfare being a permanent part of the human condition is that uh, there are always too many people for the available resources and so you inevitably get this kind of Malthusian situation where people are struggling over land or, or uh, water or oil, uh, these sorts of things. Now, the problem is, is that if you do a statistical analysis and you look at uh, armed conflicts through history, there are some conflicts where clearly there was a struggle over uh, resources. Economics uh, played a, a very important role, but there are other, uh, there are other wars that uh, didn't show uh, resource scarcity as a, a really important uh, factor. World War I is a really good example. World War I was fought by the, the wealthiest, most powerful states um, in the world, and it really had to do more with national uh, pride and these kinds of um, uh, nationalistic cultural factors than uh, the simple struggle over resources. Also, the, the theory that resource scarcity leads to war is um, contradicted by studies of some simple societies. There's a, uh, a tribal society in the Amazon called the Yanomamo. Uh, it's very well known. It was discovered by a, uh, and first studied by a, an anthropologist named Napoleon Chagnon uh, beginning in the 1960s. And Chagnon wrote this book that became a huge bestseller called The Violent People uh, that was published in the late 60s, right during the Vietnam War. And uh, the, the Yanomamo fight constantly and viciously. You have these little uh, villages that go out in raiding parties and, and uh, spear, uh, spear each other and shoot arrows at each other and then uh, race back to their villages. And of course, that leads to a feud what Chagnon has found is that there is an inverse correlation between um, the population density, because the Yanom Yanomama are spread over a very wide uh, region of, of uh, the Amazon. So he has gone to different places and found that um, the more densely uh, populated um, these tribal people are and the less food they have available, the less war there is. 
So it's exactly the opposite of what uh, you'd expect. The really sparsely populated regions where there's plenty of game to go around, those, according to Chagnon, tend to be the most violent regions. So Chagnon thinks that, um, if anything, it's because uh, the more protein you have, the more well-fed you are, the more energy you have for this kind of sport that the Yanomamo see uh, warfare as. And the more they're struggling just to feed themselves, the, the, uh, the less energy they have for warfare.